I'm Larry Walther, and this is PrinciplesOfAccounting.com, Chapter 6. In this particular module, the correct operation of a petty cash system will be considered. A petty cash system, some people call it an impressed fund, is a fund established for making small payments that are impractical to pay by check. For example, perhaps some postage due, uh, reimbursement to an employee for a small purchase of office supplies, things of this nature might be funded out of a petty cash fund. A petty cash fund is established by making a check out to cash, taking that check to the bank, cashing it, and then taking the money and placing that in a petty cash box under the control of a particular petty cash custodian. Now, when a petty cash fund is initially established, it's done so by crediting cash. Here's the $1,000 credit to cash. And we debit petty cash. These are both cash accounts on the general ledger. It's just that the petty cash account now reflects a subdivision of cash into a second account. A petty cash fund custodian safeguards the funds and makes disbursements out of the fund. In the process of establishing a petty cash fund, it's important to also establish policies regarding the appropriate types of expenditures that can be made from the fund and the process by which receipts are maintained, setting forth the nature of those expenditures. The receipts should be placed in the petty cash fund uh, as disbursements are made out of the fund. At any point in time, therefore, the receipts in the funds plus remaining cash in the petty cash fund should equal the total amount of the fund. Next, let's turn our attention to the replenishment of the petty cash fund. Whenever a fund needs to be replenished, another check is made out to cash that's taken to the bank and cashed. The amount of that check is the amount that's necessary to bring the fund back up to its original level. So that should also correspond to the receipts that are in the box. So the receipts are removed and they would be formally recorded as expenses. So here I'm assuming we needed to replenish the petty cash fund, $615. There's our credit to cash. That's the check we write out and take to the bank to get $615. That money's placed into the fund. The receipts are taken out for supplies, fuel, and miscellaneous costs in this case. And those expense accounts are appropriately debited at that time. That brings the petty cash back fund back up to $1,000, and it reflects that the $615 that was spent to remove from the box has now been appropriately recorded in the correct expense account. Notice that the petty cash account itself is not impacted. It still carries a $1,000 balance. The petty cash fund was initially debited for $1,000, and it's not changing. This is a credit to cash, not a credit to petty cash. So to review, we have a $615 check taken to the bank, the money is taken, placed into the petty cash box, and the receipts are taken out and recorded in the accounting records. That journal entry was credit cash, 615, and debit the various expense accounts for a total of 615. Sometimes the petty cash fund or any other cash account, a cash register, for example, may be short or over. Small errors can occur. Errors may cause the petty cash fund to be out of balance. There can also be math errors in making change, failure to provide a receipt for an appropriate expenditure, and so on. Nevertheless, the available cash in the box needs to be brought up to the $1,000 or the appropriate level. So we need to establish an account for cash short or over. Debit is a bad thing in this case. It reflects a cash shortage. A credit would reflect an excess amount of cash beyond the expected amount. Uh, the cash short or over would be an income statement adjustment. Uh, it's probably not material, hopefully, but it would be a miscellaneous expense or a type of adjustment. It's not just for petty cash discrepancies, but any cash short or over situation. So here's a journal entry. In this case, I actually needed to record $635 credit to cash. I recorded the same $615 of expenses. I just can't explain the $20 shortage. So now I'm debiting another expense account's cash short, in this case, to reflect. If it had been a cash overage, we would have had a credit there. And now the last thing I would like to consider as we discuss petty cash is the base fund. It might from time to time be desirable to change the amount in the petty cash fund. Uh, the base size of the petty cash fund may need to be increased as the company grows. So the journal entry to increase the fund is identical to the entry that was illustrated to establish the fund. That is, we'll debit petty cash and credit cash. So if we were to add $500 to the petty cash fund, we would debit petty cash 500 more and credit cash 500. That would be an increase in the base amount of the fund, not a reimbursement in the fund. Otherwise, the only time we would need to make an entry to the petty cash account occurs when the fund is initially established.